What's going on everybody, King of Dragons 5000 here, coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Atom Smasher Super Size from Black Atom. And so here we have the McFarlane Atom Smasher Mega Figure pose and out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's run through his one and only accessory, which is the McFarlane's display stand, which is pretty standard for all figures. Other than that, he doesn't come with any other accessories, no alternate hands or anything, which is a little bit of a shame. So with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at Atom Smasher. So here we have a closer look at the mega figure of Adam Smasher and I think McFarlane has done a really solid job with this figure. I really did like the regular size Adam Smasher as a figure. This one I think I like more for the novelty of a bigger figure and he does look really nice. As far as the costume goes it's the exact same that we saw with the smaller version of Adam Smasher just with more detail. I'm pretty sure that if you guys remember my review on the Adam Smasher he didn't have detailing on the inner blue of his mask it was just pretty much smooth. Here they did texture it which it does bring out a lot of nice detail. Still not a fan of the Deadpool-esque style of mask I would prefer just a solid dark blue mask. But this does look really nice and it's a very nice sculpt. Even having the seam lines more visible on this it makes it look more like an actual costume rather than just an action figure so I do like that. Again I'm a fan of the whited out eye that does harken back to how Adam Smasher looks in the comics. Really do like the lighter blue around the neck. It, he maintains all the same detail that we saw on that original figure as well as some of the same problems and that goes double for his torso piece right here where we again have the two piece costume where it's a little bit cleaner on this figure you can see the costume still doesn't quite line up as it should especially here on the back we it lines up a little bit better and they glued it down nicer um, not all of them are going to be this clean. I know that there are going to be some where the seam line is very noticeable. On mine, I got lucky and you can see the only real mishaps are right here at the edges. Other than that, it's pretty much smooth and looks really clean. We again do have the two-tone in the shoulders and bicep which look really nice. I do like how they painted this. Again, I don't know why they couldn't paint the torso. I guess making this a softer piece helps with the shoulder movement. But yeah, it still looks really nice. I'm still a fan of this design. And just like with the smaller figure, you can see he does have the wear and tear on the braces. We have more detailing here on his banding, which is really nice. Kind of wish that they had painted those buckles. Then we do have his gloves where we have that padding right there and then more detailing on them. His gloves actually have more detailing than the original Adam Smasher figure only because there's a lot more plastic to work with even the inside of his glove is textured nicely. We still continue to have this really nice texturing throughout his suit. I'm glad that it is noticeable here on this figure and it makes sense when the figure is this big because it kind of feels like both figures have the same size of texturing which means that this is probably done first and then the smaller one was scaled down. At least that's the way I think it was done. They could have, could have been the opposite where this one was scaled up and they just were able to give it a little more detail. Really do like the smoothness here on the blue. It looks really nice and it still has that texturing so I'm really happy that they were able to continue that. But because this is a, is a painted piece versus this one you can see that the texturing did get a little bit lost here in the sculpt work. Uh, I don't know how the paint is not applied as thick here, maybe because this is a different material and they had to apply it thicker here. The belt still has that really nice worn leather color scheme to it, so it does do everything you expect it to. His costume, again, looking really good, even here at the knee pads you can see just how much wear and tear is on them on this figure. And I do like the fact that you can actually tell that they are knee pads, not just an extension of the costume, because you can see like the part where it would go over this piece. So yeah, it's a very nice look for Avon Smasher. And then once again we have his boots which again I'm a fan of these boots. I don't know what it is about it. They look really nice. The zipper is nicely sculpted and detailed. The padding looks fantastic. Even right here the red padding on the boot looks really good here. 
Just the overall detailing on this boot, I find really good. They did a fantastic job just designing this. Not the McFarlane team, but the design team for Adam Smasher. I really do like his color scheme and his design. It's very, very close to comic book accurate. So what more can you ask for from a comic book movie? Let's actually get him standing. So yeah, one thing that I want to point out before we go on to the next step of the review, the atomic symbol on him is bigger and you would think that it was a cleaner paint job. Uh, no, it's just as sloppy, except on this time, the left side got the cleaner paint while the right side got the sloppier paint. So yeah, it is going to vary from figure to figure, so just be aware of that as you pick him up. If that's something that's going to bother you, make sure you get one that has the cleanest paint apps. But overall, Adam Smasher here has some pretty good detailing and I like what we got. So with that out of the way guys, let's actually get Adam Smasher compared to other figures you may have in your collection. And so here we have Adam Smasher posing next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. Here we have Adam Smasher posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mesco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. Here we have Adam Smasher posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger and a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian. Here we have the Mega Figure of Adam Smasher posed next to the standard Adam Smasher. And for one final comparison, here we do have the McFarlane Adam Smasher posed next to the Mattel Build-A-Figure Adam Smasher. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at Adam Smasher's articulation. Now, Adam Smasher does have a ball joint here at the head, which does let him look up to about that far. He can look down even better than the normal size figure, and he does get some really nice head tilt. Turns left and right, no problem. Ball joint in the shoulder works a little bit better on the standard version rather than the mega figure because his arms really don't pivot down or up all too well. So yeah, you do make some sacrifices with the mega figure, but it does go all the way around, no problem. Out to the side, very easy. Bicep swivel works, no problem. Double bend here at the elbow, works really nice. Unfortunately, we just have a standard hinge joint here at the wrist, and that does go all the way around. We have that same ball joint with the same amount of range going back and forward, side to side, and rotates. Then we do have a second ball joint here, which goes back to about the same as a standard figure and then gets us some really decent crunch so I do like that as well as rotates. Legs do kick forward to about right there actually so they go a little bit further than the standard figure going back very nicely. Out to the side does the splits no problem and then he does have a thigh swivel which does work. Double bend here at the knee going to about that far. Unfortunately, this Adam Smasher only has a single hinge. He doesn't rotate at the foot. I have tried to rotate it, but yeah, his foot is not designed to rotate, so do keep that in mind. If it is, mine is just stuck, but I am pretty sure that this is not supposed to rotate at all, but we do get a hinge which goes back and forward. Forward facing pin for rocker ankle. Yeah, you can see it's not really wanting to turn, so I really wouldn't force it if you guys don't have to. Uh, hinge in the toe works really nice. So overall, Adam Smasher here, some pretty good articulation. I would like to see an alternate set of hands with this guy, but overall, really like the overall feel of Adam Smasher. So with that out of the way, let's actually get him posed for my final thoughts and wrap up this review. And so here we have the McFarlane Toys Adam Smasher super size figure pose for my final thoughts. And overall, this is a very nice figure to have in your collection. And I do see the appeal of the larger Adam Smasher. You want to display your figures with their power showing. And a larger Adam Smasher is the way to go if you want to have that effect. Even though I do like the smaller version of Adam Smasher, I think the mega figure takes it for me, to be quite honest. This one has everything you need in terms of the size and scale. I honestly would have made him just a tiny bit taller. That's just me personally. I think Adam Smasher to be a really big figure. And one thing I do like about this figure that I failed to mention on the original Adam Smasher figure is that the proportions on this one are a little bit better. His head seems like it actually fits on his body rather than having a shrunken down head. This is a really nice figure to own, but like I said in my review of the standard Adam Smasher, 
both are really good figures and if you can get both of them I really do recommend you get them but if you had to choose getting just one and having that in your display I honestly think the mega figure is the way to go even though he doesn't have the same bits of articulation I think his overall shelf presence is enough to warrant the pickup and he does look good posed next to your uh, Justice Society and your other DCEU figures Mega Adam Smasher here is going to run you about $40, which is the standard price for Mega figures. If you can get them on sale, I really do think he is worth it. Even at the $40 price tag, the amount of detailing and paint apps on him are just phenomenal, and I do recommend Adam Smasher. I would give him a solid 8 out of 10 if I did figure ra uh, ratings. But overall, Adam Smasher here is really good, and if you can pick up the Mega figure, I really do recommend you do so. With that being said guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other DC Multiverse videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments and if it's in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.